Hey there folks, Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to present our travel guide on Isla Mujeres, just off the coast of Cancun, Mexico. In this video, we'll tell you all the cool things you'll want to see and do on a visit to Isla Mujeres, along with how to get there, where to stay, and how to get around. Plus, we'll throw in a few secret tips along the way. Okay, let's go. First, a little background on Isla Mujeres. It's a small island just 20 minutes off the coast of Cancun, Mexico. And it was a Mayan sanctuary for hundreds, if not a thousand years. And the name, Isla Mujeres, means the Isle of Women. But it only received that name once the Spanish arrived in the 1500s, and they named it after the many statues of a Mayan goddess they found on the island. Isla Mujeres is tiny. It's only about four miles long and as narrow as a half mile wide at places, and it has a full-time population of less than 15,000. Most visitors to the island come only for a day trip. But if you have the time, it's really worth spending a few days exploring and relaxing to get a real feel for the place. Assuming you are arriving to Cancun Airport or are already staying somewhere along the Riviera Maya, the only way to get to Isla Mujeres is by a short ferry ride from the primary ferry pier of Puerto Juarez. The Ultramar Ferry Company offers a couple of other locations for pickup closer to the Cancun Hotel Zone, but Puerto Juarez should be your preferred departure option as it's the cheapest and it offers the most frequent departure times. A round trip ferry costs about 25 bucks and boats leave roughly every 30 minutes and the trip takes only 20. The ferry will bring you to the main pier directly adjacent to the primary town on the island called El Centro. The town itself is quite small and you can get around walking on foot if you just want to hit the North Island beaches and check out the town itself. For just a day or two that's probably fine but if you really want to see the island you'll want to rent a golf cart or a scooter. We highly recommend a golf cart. All the rental companies are within a few blocks of the pier and the cost is pretty much consistent between them all, around $65 a day for a standard cart. So the real choice is about the quality of the cart and the service of the company. We'd recommend Ciro's as they have slightly better pricing if you pay in US dollars cash and they have the best carts on the island. Now let's talk about where to stay. The island is small so the primary choice for lodging is do you want to stay around the main town area with the prime beaches and the most nightlife or do you want to stay further south with a more quiet and local feel? Most of the bigger hotel options are in and around El Centro but there are a few smaller options as well. If you want to be in the thick of things and do a bunch of partying this area is where you want to stay. If you prefer things a little more quiet and casual or you're more of an Airbnb type person, then staying a bit further south will be your preference. There are a lot of smaller boutique hotels in this area, many of them directly on the beach. We stayed at the highly rated Kin Ha Boutique Hotel, and if you'd like to see a review of that, please check our review, search Scottsdale Travel Chick, Kin Ha. Okay, with the logistics and lodging details out of the way, Let's talk about the top things to see and do on Isla Mujeres. We'll group the primary sites into a circular tour which can easily be done as a day trip by renting a golf cart or a scooter. First up, headed south out of town down the western edge of the island, the first thing you'll come to is the whale shark sign. Stop and get a quick couple of pics and then keep going. Next up is a turtle farm. I think it's called Tortu Granja. It's temporarily closed during COVID, but we're expecting it to open back up soon. Moving further down the west coast, there are a number of beach clubs, which are worthwhile if you want to spend the day chilling out with some food and drink, 
they may be playing and splashing along the water. The two we'd recommend here would be Aquatic Fun Park and Kinha Beach Club for a more adult or natural setting. Here's a drone shot of the Kinha Beach Club. As I mentioned, we stayed at the Kinha Boutique Hotel and the Kinha Beach Resort was integrated as part of this. It's a nice package and again, check out our hotel review if you want to learn more. Finally, as you get towards the bottom of the island, you'll come to Garifon Marine Park. There are actually two options here. There's the big fancy park with zip lines and the all-inclusive options starting at $69. That's what most people see and there's a lot of day trips coming here. And you can also swim with dolphins here. Or there's a more authentic locals place directly north called Garifon de Castilla. They also have food and drink and you can snorkel the same reef area with only 150 peso entry fee. Next up is Punta Sur. Before I get to that, just a quick shout out that if you're enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel to receive more fun, informative travel videos just like this one. And by the way, if you're also thinking about visiting Cozumel, Playa del Carmen, or Ambergris Key, all further south, please check out our top rated travel videos for each of these destinations. Okay, back to Punta Sur. It's a small park at the southern end of the island. And there's an area around the entry where you can get out and take some pictures. But we recommend paying the small 200 peso entry fee to walk to the very end of the island, see the small Mayan ruins, as well as a few Mayan sculptures and statues. And also explore the water's edge walkways they have around the point. Now, making the turn north and coming up the east side of the island, you'll see the coast here is more rocky, but there are a number of small but secluded beaches to consider as you drive up along the coast. One in specific is designated as a dog beach, and that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, one little doggy out there. <laughs> there are a number of small knick-knack and food stalls to stop at along the way but there are three primary sites along the East Coast. One is the local cemetery, which is on a small hill overlooking the ocean. It's a place to be respectful, but do check out how some of the various plots in the cemetery are taken care of and decorated by the locals. As you move further north up the East Coast, you'll next come to a smaller town near the center of the island. This area is a lot less touristy than El Centro with all its trinket and t-shirt shops. So, if you really want to try out some basic local dining options, this is the place to be. And Isla Brewing Company is here, the only microbrew on the island. As you move further north, and maybe it's west I guess, you'll come along a very nice ocean promenade to check out and one more interesting local site to consider. Guadalupe Chapel. It's a tiny Catholic church overlooking the ocean with some small grounds to explore as well. Finally, continuing north, you'll pass an abandoned local airport on your left and then arrive at the southeast edge of the main town, El Centro. Here, you'll want to explore the Malacan. Usually, Malacons are a major destination for most beach towns, but not here. It's a little bit abandoned, but it's a nice, quiet walk with some great ocean views. There are two sites to check out. One is the Gecko Bar. It's a tiny bar at only about 500 square foot, but they have great views, a large drink menu, and a live happy hour music on most nights. 
It's a really popular place for the locals, but very few tourists know about it. This is the biggest menu. Look at all these drinks. <laughs> you should be able to find something here to drink. But the smallest bar, this is it right here. But you're right on the Malacan and the water. The other site at the north end of the Malacan is quite popular, and it's the main Isla Mujeres tourist sign. So stop, get your Instagram pics, and keep on moving. After visiting the Malacan area, you'll finish back at the main downtown where you rented your golf cart or scooter. Take your time to wander around. It's relatively easy to hit up all the streets in about an hour. But the two main areas on the north side of the island you want to check out are Playa Norta, or North Beach, and Hildago Street, the main dining and entertainment street. Playa Norta and Central Beach right next door are loaded with tons of beach bars, people, and a party atmosphere. Take your pick of the many options, but our recommendation is Las Hamacas. This place gives off a really chill vibe with hammocks all around and a cool bar with live music. It's easy to spend the whole day here. The Dalgo Street runs south from Playa Norte through the center of town and is the main shopping and nightlife zone on the island. I'll talk more about this later. Phew! That's already a lot to do if you're just making a day trip. But if you happen to be lucky enough to spend a few days in the island, you have other options to consider as well. First up, and perhaps the most unique, is swimming with the whale sharks. It's really a bucket list experience, and the season for this is around June to September, with the prime time being July and August. We've done this in the La Paz area, and it's awesome. We highly recommend it if you're here in season. And if you want to learn more about the whale sharks, check out our La Paz Visitor Guide. Beyond the whale shark options, there are also numerous snorkel and diving trips to consider. Although we may say Cozumel would be a better choice for this, one unique option here is to dive the unique underwater museum. Just check out some of these funky man-made sites you can see diving in this area. If you don't want to get your feet wet, either with whale sharks or snorkeling, then another fun thing to do is book a fishing trip. Isla Mujeres is one of the most popular places in the world to catch sailfish. Finally, let's get to the dining and nightlife on Isla Mujeres. I talked about all the beach bars and the north beach scene, which is pretty cool during the day. But once the sun goes down and the day trippers leave, the primary action moves to Hidalgo Street. There are numerous dining and drinking establishments to consider across maybe five blocks of this street. We recommend either one of the taco places near the north end of the street or Mama Rosa's Italian one block south for dinner. For later in the evening, three of the most popular options are Stingray Grill, Coconuts, and Rock Bar if you like a little divier place. And don't forget about the tiny gecko place I mentioned earlier. If you have a scooter and a golf cart and want to get away from the crowds, then consider these three other options south of El Centro. Each of them are progressively more and more local secret. Oscar's is perhaps the favorite local spot on the island and serves a wide range of food options. But pizza is what they're known for, and you'll see many people picking up pies if you go to have a stop for a bite to eat. El Varadero is another local secret, and this one is a secret. It's a Cuban place on a small water channel out by itself. They have great food, and it's a great atmosphere watching the boats go by in the evening. Finally, El Charco. This, my friends, is the epitome of local. It's basically a couple, Desi and Raul, who serve great food out of their house. 
it doesn't get any more local than this, and they've been around a while with great reviews. So you know this place is worth a stop. Well, there you have it. Our ultimate visitor guide to Isla Mujeres. We hope you enjoyed. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. And please consider following us for more fun, informative travel videos just like this one. Until next time, see you later.